Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson with PurePrescriptions.com. Welcome to another show. And what we're going to talk about today is female hormones. Uh, before we talked about adrenal hormones, and so now we want to we want to put some more uh, pieces of the hormone cascade together. And before we go into that, let's talk a little bit about education. Education is going to be sort of a theme of, of what we discuss with uh, these pre-prescription shows. And the thing of it is, is that we have to be our own advocate. We have to care more about our health and well-being than anybody else, more than our doctor, more than our nutritionist, more than anybody else. So we have to get educated. You don't need, you don't need to go out and get a medical degree, but it's important that we read books that are out there. We um, visit various websites. I know that you know some websites are better than others, and there's probably a lot of BS out there. But I think um, I think you know we'll usually know when we're when we come across something that really seems to be uh, valid and good information. So, on that topic, let's uh, let's go into a little bit of education on female hormones. I think there's two there's two different parts to female hormones that we'll discuss a little bit about. The first one is is women who are in their childbearing years, and then there's female hormone issues that can happen in, in the non-childbearing years in menopause. And so with, with the women in the, in the childbearing years, you know, probably the most common thing is either amenorrhea, where, the, where the, um, the hormones just sort of stop and menstruation stops, and that's one issue. Another one is PMS, premenstrual syndrome, where there's a lot of different um, symptoms, and women know what I'm talking about who's ever experienced that. But here's the bottom line. Here's what makes it really simple is, is let's just take out the guesswork. The best thing to do is to have your hormones analyzed. And how do we have our hormones analyzed? One is either blood, and the other one is salivary hormones. And here's, here's the main difference between this, because there's a lot of misconception or maybe just misunderstanding of how we're supposed to check our home hormones. The hormones that are in blood are protein bound, most of them. When we do a blood test, the majority of it is going to be protein bound. The protein bound hormones are, are inactive. They are not the hormones that are binding to the receptor sites and making changes in the body. The hormones that are what we call free fraction hormones are the hormones that we find in the saliva. So my feeling and, and, and most people's understanding of hormones is the salivary hormones are much more clinically significant because they're the ones that are, that are like I said, binding to the receptor sites and, and doing what hormones do in the body. The hormones that are in blood are more the reserves of the hormones. They're not really the active ones. So those might be analyzed for certain situations, but for somebody who has symptoms of hormone imbalance, really the salivary ones are, are the gold standard these days. A lot of the research that's being done, they use salivary hormones to monitor you know, whatever they're, they're trying to test with the hormones. So they're really, uh, those are the ones uh, that should be monitored. It's really easy to do. The collection is way easier. It's collecting saliva as opposed to getting stuck. And so it makes a lot more sense. It's cost effective. Um, so there's really no reason why, uh, why we shouldn't have the hormones tested before we have any kind of um, therapy. And here's the thing about therapy is so many times I see somebody who um, is put on some hormones. Maybe it's estrogen, maybe it's progesterone. I say, OK, well, what were your levels before, before you, were, you were put on these hormones? Uh, I don't think they checked my hormones. And that is just absurd to me. It, it makes no sense whatsoever why somebody would have, um, would be administering hormones without knowing where the hormones are. Because symptoms of hormone imbalance are oftentimes the same whether it's high or low. So you can be driving a problem in the wrong direction if you don't actually check the hormones. So I would never recommend taking any hormones or any hormone modulating nutrients until you know, until you get a good baseline of where your hormones are. And so, um, so that's, the, uh, that's the childbearing year type, that type hormones. Um, it, and a lot of women are taking birth control pill, which is, which is really like, like heavy duty um, hormone replacement therapy. So I think it's, if it's especially 
valid if somebody is, wants to come off the birth control pill to get pregnant, it's really important to, to start looking at the hormones and to see if there's some ovulation happening because sometimes just coming off the birth control, birth control pill it takes a, a while for the body to kick in and for the hormones to really start balancing. So monitoring them and doing the appropriate therapies to help the body uh, regulate and produce these hormones I think is really, really important. Um, something else about hormones is all the hormones in the body work like a big symphony. And if just one instrument in the symphony is off, it's gonna throw off the whole hormone cascade. So it's important if there's also some hormone problems to, um, and let's say it's not the female hormones, we wanna, we wanna have the thyroid analyzed, we wanna have the adrenal hormones analyzed because they all, they all work together. And um, let's go into the, the menopause type hormones. I guess the chief symptom that really happens with menopause is, is, is hot flashes um, and flushes, and that's, that's, that's probably one of the main things that most women go through menopause is the fluctuation and change. And it's the same answer. You've got to get them analyzed. There's no silver bullet for, for PMS. There's no silver bullet for, um, for menopause. There's, there's the, the, the silver bullet really is to have the hormones analyzed, figure out what the imbalance is, and then do the appropriate therapies for balance. And then um, a little bit on the therapies is there's a, a really interesting study that was done, the Women's Health Initiative, and they had a huge pool of women that they were monitoring conjugated estrogens, like Premarin. Conjugated estrogens are completely synthetic estrogens. They look completely different from a natural estrogen that's floating around in the body. And it was, um, I think it was a five or six year test that they actually stopped at three years because women were, were dying and getting sick with, uh, with heart attacks and with strokes. So they actually stopped the study short because conjugated estrogens are just not good for the, for the human body. And so there's still doctors that are prescribing these conjugated estrogens. And you as a consumer need to know that there are other choices that you can make. There's the bioidentical type uh, hormones that the molecule looks the same as the molecule that's floating around in the body. So there's bioidentical progesterone and estrogen. And, and uh, so let's say that there's an imbalance in the hormones, then you can take bioidentical hormones to help uh, to create a better balance. And also sometimes there's other things that need to be manipulated within the hormones, and you don't always have to take the hormone itself. There's other hormone modulating nutrients that, that you can take uh, to create the balance. So the key things are, if you have symptoms of hormone imbalance, is to have them analyzed, whether it's adrenal hormones or whether it's female hormones. Um, salivary testing, in my opinion, is far and away more clinically significant than having the blood hormones tested. And then to keep in mind that you have more choices than the conjugated estrogens and the other pharmaceutical type uh, therapies that are applied by, the, um, by uh, medical doctors and people who practice allopathic medicine. There are uh, bioidentical types that you can investigate. And so uh, that actually is um, something that's very easy to do. And um, I hope this, this provided you some, some good information about the hormones. And we love it when you comment on the show, so uh, please, um, add a comment, and if you have any kind of story that you'd like to share with us, then we'd love to hear from you. Thank you.